Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at Annie Are You OK? She's in need of some updates and upgrades. The YOLO drive setup that we ran on her at the last meet kind of worked, but uh, the motors are very precarious and both of them got exceedingly damaged. So we're going to pull Annie apart, check for some damage, and then we're going to try and upgrade to the tangential drive system that I've showed off in a past video. So yeah, first of all though, let's take a look at the damage. Now there's some of this I already know about. So obviously I know about the motors getting absolutely annihilated uh, on both sides. This one does work a little bit, but it gets catchy. Uh, if you spin it and then kind of spin it, try and spin it back the other way, it catches. Uh, and then the actual front plate here is bent away from the main chassis. So all of those things I knew already before this, uh, but I want to pull everything else apart and see if there's any extra damage to the frame because if there is, then we might need to change up the system a little bit because at the moment uh, we are running not a lot of metal in Annie anymore. I've been kind of slowly removing the metal from her system as I've gone through, but we're going to have a look at all of that in half a sec. So that was interesting. She was and wasn't more damaged than I thought she might have been. Uh, the big hit on the front plate, which did in fact uh, bend this half up. You can kind of see that on camera. Uh, yeah, that, that was massive. It got hit uh, in the side and bent. And yeah, I think it's time that we retire this specific piece of HDPE, especially as this is the one that I took to BuggleBots uh, so it has been in combat for a while now and it's not really, uh, yeah, fit for use anymore. So we're going to retire this particular piece. It has taken a lot of abuse over the years, uh, but we'll get another one of these sorted at some point in the very near future. Uh, outside of that, the actual frame itself is surprisingly fine. It's fairly rigid still or is quite rigid still. Uh, and this is without the front mount plate across it. Uh, so that, that has worked out pretty well. I like this, yeah, HDPE tapped and screwed into itself. It's really nice. Uh, the front plate itself or the front armor itself is a little bit damaged. You can see in under here, there is some wear marks where the bearing has ground on the aluminium. I think I need to do something about that. Maybe a steel plate, maybe a different type of bearing setup or a washer or something. I don't particularly know. This part itself isn't the straightest thing in the world. It is starting to bend in a little bit uh, and maybe up a little bit too. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure on that. There's some weird curvature going on. Uh, so I might need to start looking at this piece as a replaceable part or a consumable part because I might need to make these kind of every couple of months uh, and not rely on just having one. Speaking of the weapon system, because this is what the weapon system mounts to and it's done that amount of damage, the weapon system itself also had extra damage on it too. So. Uh, whatever happened in the last fight, we burnt out the belt, which is something that was happening a long, long time ago. Uh, and then I fixed that by putting teeth on my weapon pulleys. And apparently that hasn't fixed the issue entirely because we did manage to burn this pulley out. Uh, and in doing so, we also managed to burn out the glass filled nylon pulley that goes on the actual motor mount as well. So there was a lot of damage in there. And again, I think this is because the hub on the weapon 
was one that I'd run a couple of meets with, so the teeth burnt out slowly and then ended up hitting a point where they just could not keep going and burnt out entirely, causing the belt to heat up, causing the glass filled nylon to melt. So none of that is very good and you can kind of see that in here, you can see that the belt has left residue inside the actual cutout for the belt. And then we have the other piece here, which is the kind of motor mount standoff piece that holds the motor at exactly the right point so that the belt does the right things. Uh, it's also got a break in it, and I have no idea if I'm going to be able to show you this on camera, but there is a split that runs kind of down here, down the layer lines in that way, uh, and it sucks. <laughs> uh, there we go, you might be able to see that on camera. Yeah, that break there. Uh, this piece I printed very, very light. There's not a whole lot of infill in here or anything because I thought I could get away with it because the last couple of times this hasn't been very structural. All it does is hold the motor up a certain amount and 3D prints are pretty good in compression. So I thought we were gonna be okay. Apparently we do need to actually print this a little bit stronger than what I did because yeah, it's falling apart. Uh, yeah, so that's all of that. That it, It's interesting, the weapon system failing in ways that I thought I'd fixed the issues for is kind of annoying, but at the same time, I think the system we have is as good as we're gonna get, and we just basically need to treat everything in the weapon system as a consumable and upgrade it and replace and change for every single meat or maybe every two meets, because I think, I think we can get a couple of meets out of that. So I am going to uh, finish pulling Annie down and then we'll have a look at some printed parts for the new drive system. And here are the new parts. So we've got a new wheel using the same uh, type that I did in the friction drive or the tangential drive testing. And then I have a new piece, which is just a 3D printed version of one of these sidewalls. Eventually this will get uh, done properly in HDPE. And then I've got a spacer, which actually mounts the motor. So these two parts go together like this and the motor sits in the recess and hopefully sits at exactly the right spot to do what we need it to do. So I have it completely uh, pulled Annie apart because I've left one uh, wheel on or motor on because I'm going to throw the wheel back on here and make sure that I've got the height aligned properly uh, for all of this to work. But we're gonna take the side off, we're gonna replace it with the 3D printed part, maybe if this works, uh, and then we will actually see if this sits together nicely. So that is looking pretty good. I think I've got my tolerances a little bit wrong on this side uh, because the wheel is actually kind of tilted back just a little bit. I also need to uh, change the positioning of this plate here so that the wires come out the side rather than out the top. But yeah, you can see that that wheel is just a little bit bent back. I mean, it works, the, uh, the system tangentially drives. There's probably just a touch too much friction in this though, so we might need to move things just a little bit to get it all to work. The other thing, of course, is we need to check that the front plate still goes on, uh, and I believe it does. Awesome. So, that's good because this, there's a, just a little bit of tolerance in here uh, to allow this front wedge to go on. All right, so I am going to change this up just a little bit and cut some pieces, and then we'll build both sides out and actually get Annie back on her wheels again. So I spent a bit of time looking over the CAD and I can't see why this wheel would be uh, bent out of shape the way it is. I think it actually might be because these wheels at the moment are solid, uh, flexible PLA. So there's a little bit of flex in the actual mounting of the bearing, unlike the ones that I had in Boris, which had a flexible outer and then a, uh, a hard PLA inner so that there wasn't any flex in that. So what I've decided to do is just continue on with this. We've got new parts. I'm gonna put these new parts in. I'm gonna put Annie back together and hopefully we'll get this thing driving. Uh, if this doesn't work with the fle fully flexible wheels, then I have got some parts that will allow me to use these wheels in this system. Uh, anyway, let's get this all back together. 
Cool, mostly back together. The big part of the reason I wanted to get uh, Annie back together is I'm probably not gonna be able to finish her today. Uh, there's some stuff going on in my life that has just made uh, this week a bit crazy. Uh, so I won't be able to CNC mill any parts today. Uh, but I did need to make sure that with these new intrusions, I could still fit the battery in place. And it looks like that's totally fine. There's no real problems with that. So we should still be able to fit everything inside Annie uh, once all is said and done. But that is actually looking pretty good. The only thing that's not looking pretty good is the fact that uh, the weapon is currently dragging on the ground. The front standoffs aren't quite enough. They do touch the ground and the motors, the wheels do move everything. But if I spin the weapon, it grinds into the floor. Uh, so there's one spot where you can balance the weapon about there and everything will work. Uh, so I actually need to buff up the front standoffs just a little bit. Uh, I tried flipping them around, but that was way too much. So once again, with Annie, these front standoffs are critical in terms of how she performs and how she behaves. So I'm gonna buff these two front standoffs, see if we can get a little bit of a quick test drive going. I'm not gonna use Annie's setup. I'm going to use Boris's setup because I haven't had time to uh, repair the wiring. As long as everything works, this has been a good prototype that we can advance on in the future, doing the CNC panels, uh, changing the motors over so that then instead of having the wiring stick up in the air, they stick out the, the back here and go in through the robot, which would actually help quite a lot. Uh, yeah, and maybe upgrading these wheels so that they're a little bit better than what they are at the moment because these wheels do seem a touch flexible. When there's a uh, force on them like there is now, the bearings don't hold quite as well inside the flexible material as they probably should for this type of stuff. <laughs> So that didn't go overly well. Um, but the same issue here is the one that I faced when I put the Yolo drive system on in the first place, and that is not enough mass towards the back of the robot. So what ends up happening is that the weight of the weapon drags everything down at the front and one of the wheels doesn't quite touch the ground properly. Now, right at this point in time, they seem to be touching the ground okay. Uh, I don't really know how or why that's the case, but yeah, there's just a little bit of rock in the system and it means that when I'm actually trying to drive, things don't quite work well. So even though I have uh, buffed the underside of our standoffs with tape, uh, I haven't got that quite right and that is causing issues. So I'm gonna need to fix that uh, in the near future. But I think this is the way to go. I also quite like the fact that if you look at Annie from a side on view, these motors are quite protected and I could cut these standoffs in such a way that they protect even more of the motor itself. Annie should be able to run upside down like this once I have the wiring set up so that the wiring goes into the Annie rather than up out the top. Uh, so on the whole, I'm pretty happy with this setup. I just need to condense it and fix it and uh, make it actually work a little bit better. Cause yeah, at the moment, not so much. Although I will say uh, she is driving a lot better here and now for some reason. And I really don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, no, here we go. When I'm running this motor by hand, the wheel is not really touching the ground properly. So I need to make sure all of my balances and everything are right and we'll get that right at some point in the near future and actually finish off this version of Annie. I also want to, as I mentioned, redo the front plate. I actually want to redo most of the stuff here and give Annie a proper color scheme and paint job for the first time in a very, very long time. Anyway, sorry this episode's been a bit weird uh, and a bit short and not quite completed, uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed that one all the same, and I will see you in the next video.